bandana. I can see that. Wait, you see the steak I got. Jerry says it's the biggest one he's had in the store in months. <laughs> yeah, how do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Cooking things frozen. So if you want dinner sooner rather than look, May, I've got something to tell you. Do you like your scotch? God damn it! I'm sorry. Things weren't always like this. Things used to be different. What, what are Maybe you it's my about? probably. I don't care anymore. I'll have some peas and pearl onions, please. Hello. I did not expect to see you back here so soon. Oh, I, I thought I'd get something to go with the mashed potatoes. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, I can assure you these are the best peas and pearl onions we've had in the store all season. Oh, Jerry, you're such a good boy. Thanks. Uh, your total is 437. Will that be cash or credit? For the peas? Cash it is. Keep the change. Oh, you know, actually, it's uh, store policy. I can't tell. So how is the captain doing tonight? Hungry, I take it. Oh, tired. When he works out, he comes home just about ready to drop dead. I'd imagine. Well, you have a good night. Catch him. I swear, mate. 
I'm gonna catch whoever did this. He's gone. You know, your husband wasn't just my superior when he was on the force. He was my friend. And a damn good fishing buddy. After we were married, we, we lived in the city in this tiny apartment. Oh, we were so poor. Bab worked midnights. And, and in the summertime, he would come home and his hair would be sticking out all over the place. <laughs> from the camp. He had long hair for a policeman. Oof. I made him take a shower when he came home. And then I would take a towel and I would fluff his hair till it got dry. Oh. Hmm. And the children came we moved out here. We started cutting it short. There was this one time. Bob hooked the largest trout I had ever seen on Grove Lake. God, that was years ago. <laughs> the sucker broke his fly rod. Well, I guess that was partly to blame. I was trying to crane it up for him and, well. Lieutenant. What is it, Jess? I was wondering if I could have a word with you. Yes. Alone, sir? One moment, though. Oh. Don't bother. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, well, what is it, Jess? Officer Gomez and I talked to the boy that worked the counter at the grocery store. Mrs. Lockwood's story checks out. She went to the grocery store at approximately 5.15 p.m. to buy peas and pearl onions and paid in cash. According to the cashier, she seemed completely chill. Well, that officially clears it then. Could work, Jess. I'm not so sure, sir. About what? Sir, we have no witness, no motive, no murder weapon. She's the only suspect we have. That sweet, fragile woman? You didn't know Bob Lockwood, hon. This was the work of a cold-blooded killer. Seem to be acting well, I don't want to have to be the one to tell those grandkids. She doesn't seem to be acting strange to you, sir. Excuse me? Um, I am so sorry. It, it's way past supper time, and uh, why? Would you like something to eat? That won't be necessary, Mrs. Lockwood. Uh, well, true. Hey, Jess, can you pass the salt and pepper? Come on, Jess, eat up. We're doing her a favor. I'm not hungry. Well, we got a football. We got the $5. Suit yourself. Mm. Those beets? Mm. No. Yeah. In there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, would you all like something to drink? A beer, wine? We're not actually supposed I'll? Take a beer? I'll have one too. And he'll have one as well. Some red wine might be a nice little accent. Yeah, do you maybe have some scotch? It's been kind of a long day. Sure. 
Kipsa? Kipsa, isn't it? Kipsa, yeah. It should be. I'll be right there. So the doc says we're looking for a heavy, blunt instrument. Given the shape of the wound at the base of the skull, he thinks possibly a small shovel. Something pretty heavy, like a crowbar or mallet, maybe? I'm eating here. See, I'm thinking it's still here on the premises. Yeah. Don't worry about a thing, boys. It's around here somewhere. Probably right under our nose.